If there's two things that all NASCAR fans have in common, it's their love and their hate for NASCAR. Sometimes enough hate to make you question if we're even NASCAR fans, but you know what? We criticize because we care. So here are seven things that NASCAR fans love to hate. And hey, if this is your first time on the channel, my name is John, and we love to talk about NASCAR here. So leave a like, subscribe, and if you want more, we publish every day on DailyDownForce.com. We talk about silly season rumors, video games, and everything that's happening in NASCAR's top series. That's also where you can find all of our content creators and even their merch stores so you can show your support. And of course, be sure to follow us on all of your favorite social media apps. We're on every single day talking about NASCAR. Of course, the first item on our list is the playoffs. It doesn't matter what format or what year, ever since they were introduced as the chase way back in 2004, they've always been controversial. And it feels like with every passing year, the level of disdain for the playoffs reaches new heights, as more and more championship caliber seasons are sacrificed for the system. Sorry, Willie B, should have turned some more iRacing laps at nope. Phoenix. So what, you were the best driver for the first 35 weeks of the year. And, I mean, there is some validity here, because why even watch the first 32 races of the season when in all reality, only the last four actually matter? You could make the playoff points argument, but Ryan Blaney didn't exactly have a lot of those. Heck, he came into the playoff seat at 11th with only 8 points to Byron's 41, and still walked away with a cup at season's end. So, if the majority of the season doesn't even matter, are declining TV ratings really that much of a mystery? I mean, the whole reason why the playoffs were drummed up to begin with was to inflate NASCAR's ratings in the fall so we could eventually dethrone football as America's favorite sport. But just like so many other stories, NASCAR flew a little too close to the sun and continues to pay the price to this very day, as NASCAR's point system lose credibility with every passing year. What's even the point of crowning a champion if that champion isn't even remotely close to being the best in the sport? Sure, this has the potential to happen in other sports too, but it's a lot harder to get lucky in advance in most stick and ball sports. At the end of the day, you still gotta beat multiple of the best teams in the league to become champions. Whereas in NASCAR, it feels more like you just gotta survive off of other people's bad luck and then just have a good car prep for Phoenix and bada bing bada boom, the cup is yours. But moving on to number two on our list, we have something far less egregious, but something that people love to hate regardless, forward slid door numbers. If there's one thing that NASCAR fans hate to be reminded of, it's that racing is a business. And other than Eric Almarola, nothing makes that more apparent than the door numbers being moved up just to give sponsors a teensy bit more room to rub their logos in your face. Even if those logos really don't fit that well in the new door space and look incredibly awkward and sometimes leave even more blank space in the car than it originally had. I'll give it this, at least it looks way better than the backslid door numbers from the 2020 All-Star Race, but the conspiracy theorist in me believes that NASCAR purposely wanted those cars to look as bad as possible, so that when they moved the door numbers forward like they always intended, we would have that exact reaction of, at least it's better than moving them backwards. I got your number, NASCAR! You can't pull the wool over my eyes with this one! Anyway, unless you drive for Trackhouse, Stewart Haas and maybe Hendrick. These paint schemes are pretty hideous more often than not, and they kinda killed most attempts at making good throwback paint schemes too. So NASCAR, put that thing back where it came from, or so help me! Alright, minor aesthetic stuff aside, let's get back to the racing product. And when it comes to that, few things catch more flack on a weekly basis than Goodyear tires. And now, let's hear a word from Goodyear's biggest fan, Tony Stewart. Then I strongly suggest they, uh, they go back to just making street tires and I'm not even sure that's a good idea. I mean, I'm going home and everything that I have that has good years on it, I'm dismounting and putting Firestones on, so... Uh... And after positively glowing reviews like that one, how could you possibly not love these things? It hasn't helped that in the next-gen era, Goodyear has been extremely conservative in their approach, more often than not bringing an absolute rock to the track that barely wears out. And, well, in fairness, when they don't, it leads to disasters like the 2022 Texas race where leaders are blowing out their tires every 20 laps. So whenever a race has too many blowouts, blame Goodyear. Whenever there's no tire wear at all, blame Goodyear. Maybe the temperature of the track was slightly off what was predicted for the weekend so the racing wasn't as good? Yup, blame Goodyear. I mean, it's literally the easiest thing to do. Their name is plastered around every racetrack so casual and hardcore fans alike can point out and go, hey, those guys aren't doing a very good job, aren't they? But if there's one thing that NASCAR fans hate more than Goodyear tires when it comes to lackluster racing, it's low horsepower. I mean, this one makes a lot of sense. NASCAR was built upon the idea of taking a street car to its absolute limits, making them as fast as possible to outrun the police. So why on God's green earth are we taking horsepower away from the cars nowadays? To save the teams a few dollars on their engine bills? Which many drivers and other professionals in the industry say hasn't really made any difference at all? or to attract a mythical fourth manufacturer to the sport? 
Point is, we the race fans can't really see any of the benefits, if there are any, to lower horsepower. All we see is less speed on the racetrack and more struggles with the racing product itself. Looking at the next gen car and its 670 horsepower across the board, we can plainly see that tracks like intermediates that got a bump in horsepower from the gen 6 car have much better racing now. But things like short tracks and road courses that got a reduction have much worse racing now. Sure, there are tons of other factors that go into that, not just horsepower, but it's the simplest thing for the average race fan to look at and go, hey, bigger number equals better racing. Hmm. But, yeah, having drivers, teams, and even engine builders sit there and say we need more horsepower to make the racing better adds a lot of credibility to that as well. The fifth thing to discuss is a problem that used to be a lot worse than it is now, but still exists in some capacity, and that is bushwhacking. A term that originates from cup drivers going down to the Xfinity series, called the Bush series at the time, and beating up on those poor toddlers until they couldn't take any more. In fact, cup drivers would win the Xfinity series championship every year from 2006 to 2010, until a limit was finally imposed on them in 2011. During this five-season stretch, many cup drivers would finish in the top 10 in points even if they miss multiple races during the season. That's just how much better the average cup driver is than an Xfinity driver. If an Xfinity driver ever managed to win a race when a cup driver was in the field, it was considered nothing short of a Christmas miracle. After years of fan outrage, it was decided the cup drivers could no longer run for points in the lower series, and eventually they would be restricted to just five Xfinity and five truck starts per year. And while that's a lot better, you still won't catch me buying any Xfinity tickets to a race that has Kyle Busch in the entry list. I think I'll just save my time and my money and stay home. Number six is something that everybody has an opinion on. The broadcast. Whether it's Fox, NBC, ESPN, or, well, usually Fox, everyone's got something to complain about. Too many commercials, too many non-cable races, too much Clint Boyer, too many commercials, too much Rick Allen, too many commercials. There was almost zero consensus in the NASCAR community on who's a good commentator, who's a bad commentator, who's actually adding insight to the race, or who's just blabbering. At least in football, everyone knows to just hate Joe no, Buck. God. But I think NASCAR fans just hate the idea of NASCAR being televised. And hey, I get it. Using your phone to check which channel the race on this weekend is hard. If you're over the age of 50, but that's most NASCAR fans this day, so you know what? I get it. And finally, our seventh, and arguably the most important thing that NASCAR fans hate the most, is change itself. It doesn't matter what change it is, if anything changes at all, even if it seems like on paper to be an objectively good change, NASCAR fans will not accept it for at least five years. Probably because most NASCAR rule changes don't even last five years. So they might be onto something there, actually. Sometimes the change is overwhelmingly hated before it even happens, like the Chicago street race. And then when it actually does happen, people say, wait a minute, there was no way that was actually good. Think about it, when was the last time NASCAR announced any form of change that actually had a positive reaction? The choose code, maybe? Almost four years ago? Obviously, there are some changes that we've gotten accustomed to over time, like green-white checkers and stage racing and heck, maybe even the door numbers in a few more years. But definitely, very, very few of them are seen as good changes in the moment. And maybe that's the lesson that we need to take away from all of this. Maybe change isn't something to fear, rather something to embrace and accept. Who am I kidding? These door numbers are always gonna look ugly! But hey, uh, thanks for watching today's video. Be sure to tell me in the comments down below what you love to hate about NASCAR. But don't forget to leave a like on this video, subscribe for more videos just like this one, and check out DailyDownForce.com for more great NASCAR content.